everyone, my name is Paige and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today we are going to be doing my August reading roundup and my September TBR. Uh, in August I read 11 books slash stories um, and I'm super excited to share with them. Most of them were phenomenal. I had a hard time ranking them. Um, if this is your first time here, I do rank my, them from my least favorite to my most favorite. I don't do starred reviews, but you can kind of get a feeling of how much I liked it or disliked it by the way I talk and I will tell you blatantly if I liked it or did it. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Coming in at number 11 in August was one of the first books I had read. I didn't have it on my TBR um, but I've had it on my physical TBR for a while so I thought I'd go ahead and pick it up um, and it is Witchling by Yasmin Galoran. Um, I was severely disappointed by this. I thought it was going to be a little bit better than it was. Um, the writing was just kind of cheesy at some points. Um, not the best. Um, and I really had to force myself to keep going through the only 276 pages of a mass market. So like I would not re personally recommend this to anybody. Um, if they get better, I know there's like 13 books in this series. Um, if they get better, I would be willing to give it a second chance. But if they all remain this quality, I will just not. Okay, so coming in at number 10 is a short story that I received in um, exchange for an honest review. Um, and it is called Taking the Fall by Daisy Landish. It's part of a short story series uh, called Mike and Maddie. Um, I wasn't lost. <laughs> uh, in the description it specifically said that they can be read in any order and I read through after I read it. I read through some of the reviews of like the first one and similar people kind of noted, noted this as well where they the stories reference a lot of things that don't happen within what has been published and I kind of understand what she's trying to do. She's trying to build that external relationship, trying to ground these characters, making it so they have this relationship ahead of time, but it could have been done better. Um, another thing that I didn't absolutely enjoy about it um, was for a mystery, even a cozy mystery, it wasn't as complex as it could have been. Even with its short length, I think the author could have evolved a little bit more, expand, like talked about other suspects versus a lot of it was really focused on a a girl that the main character Mike had met when they found their bod found the body. Um, I think a whole chapter was dedicated to that, and then she just kind of drops off the face of the earth. Um, and then also them just sitting around the detective going, "Oh, I can't really say anything, but here," um, which was also a little weird. And yeah. So it's definitely a little bit better than the other one, but not by much. Um, I gave one of them not so good ratings on Goodreads and the other one only very slightly more. Um, so yeah. So coming in at number nine, and this gets into the books that I like actually enjoyed a little bit more. Like I said, I don't dislike a lot of books. Um, I may think some of them are very meh and I will probably never read them again uh, but there are very few that I would actively go out of my way to never read again and like I said um, which thing was definitely one of those but the next one I have is Firelight by Sophie Jordan if you like uh, Talon by Julie Kay who is the one who also wrote um, the Iron King series I would highly recommend this. Um, it's very similar. It is a little bit dated, but it's it's still good. It's when YA was in the boom. Um, cell phones were still kind of like new and teens are having it. 
And I think one of the things that really redeemed this book in terms of how like old it is and because you have a lot of the times where in YA it, when it was huge and big, I mean YA is still huge, it's a whole genre, but like when it was really growing at that exponential pace. Um, in those books you have it very much where a lot of the times the parents will just disappear or they seem to a normal human um, a little bit neglectful or they are very oblivious. Um, that 100% wasn't happening in this and I really enjoyed that. Um, so the book is basically Jacinda who is um, a Draki who is which is a dragon um, that can shape shift descended from actual dragons. Um, starts to fall in love with a hunter and that's known from very in the beginning so I'm not spoiling anything there and kind of talking about their relationship and her need to still want to hold on to that part of the her identity even though her mom wants her to get rid of it because it's a danger to herself. Um, so I like I said I really enjoyed it. It is a little bit dated but uh, overall it was a good fun read. Um, it's shorter and very easy to read so you can read it in three or four hours. Okay this is the point where it got really really hard <laughs> to rank them um, and this is part of the reason why I don't do the star system because I feel like it's so nuanced that even if I were to give everything four or five stars which is usually the case um, it still doesn't 100% give over my feelings to all of them uh, whereas like ranking them a little bit does more so in my opinion. I don't know, feel free to disagree. But the next book I have is The Color of Magic by Terry Pratchett. Um, I enjoyed this, it was hilarious. And uh, the only thing I didn't love about it and why it kind of fell a little bit further down on the list when I was thinking about it is the writing style is just a little bit older. Um, it took a little bit more of my concentration to read. But overall, I 100% know why Discworld is so important within the fantasy realm, especially whenever you're talking about fantasy with some humor because that's not always what you see because fantasy is very serious and usually includes lots of war and death and while this includes death, um, it's kind of comical. <laughs> so yeah, um, The Color of Magic, I would definitely recommend this. I will be looking for the other Discworld series um, to pick up probably over the course of years because there's quite a few of them. Number seven! Um, this is going to be New Spring by Robert Jordan. Uh, I picked this up because I was looking for a new fantasy that wasn't 30 some hours long to listen to uh, while I was waiting for some of my other holds to come in and this one was available and I really like one of the narrators. Her name is Kate Redding. Um, and so I picked it up and I was not disappointed. Uh, this is the prequel to the Eye of the World series which is uh, on Amazon Prime um, and it's kind of trying to fill the gap of like Game of Thrones and stuff. But Robert Jordan, um, I like his writing style and I liked hearing a lot of things from Moraine's point of view and I like learning how she and her companion met. I did listen to it on a little bit faster speed, so some of my pronunciations may be a little bit wrong here, uh, but like I said, I overall enjoyed New Spring by Robert Jordan. Um, I have Eye of the World on hold because there is like a six week-ish wait list for it, um, and that's probably just multiple people trying to put it on hold over and over again because it is 30 hours long. Um, so I will be looking forward to listening to the rest of it. Uh, I think that this is going to be really interesting comparing it, the whole series to the TV show versus the books. Um, but yeah, that's why Robert, uh, and like I said, New Spring by Robert Jordan, like I said, it's number seven. So it kind of fell a little bit on the lower end, but still kind of in the middle. Okay, so here's the review for the book that I said I was going to read for months and finally did. <laughs> Um, Ink Blood Sisters Cry by Emma Torres. Uh, I really did enjoy this book. I love the ending. Um, it just kind of ends on that, oh, look at all these possibilities there are type of ending. Um, and 
I like the different points of view. Um, it didn't rank higher on this list because I think I've said this before in some of my previous videos and I think including in the 24 hour challenge video that I did was it took a little bit more of my concentration than I would have liked to have read it. Um, and that may have been where I was and if I read it again it may change. Um, I may have a different perspective on it but that the prolongness of it of how long it took me to read it is kind of what pushed it down to number six versus going up to three or four. Number five is Brooding Over Bloody Revenge by Nikki Howard. I am actually not going to do a review of this right now because I am planning on doing a whole video review of this book. Um, I there's I have a lot of thoughts on it um, and I want to read some passages out of it that I think may be interesting and why books like this can be super helpful to writers. Um, so I will be posting that here in the next couple of weeks as soon as I can get that done. So number four is uh, an audiobook that I listened to. This is Glass Houses by Louise Penny. It's um, number 13 in the Expector Gamache series. Um, this one is uh, about a a figure that appears in Three Pines and everybody kind of freaks out because it just stands there and watches people and then a couple days later somebody turns up dead um, and Inspector Gamache has to figure that out. But at the same time he's also dealing with another problem. I'm not going to go into that other problem because I don't want to spoil it for you if you have not read the series yet because I highly highly recommend reading it. Um, but I think why this re is, I really, like I said, I really enjoyed this. I listened to it in like five or six days in like half the amount of time that I have it from the library. Um, and I think the reason why I didn't rank higher is because the opposite problem of that uh, short story I was had taking the fall, I felt like some points were a little too complex um, and other parts of it just got pushed to the wayside. But it wasn't a serious enough issue that I thought it needed to rank further down. Um, it's still a great story. Her writing is phenomenal and I always get lost. And the guy that reads it, Robert um, Bathin? Uh, yeah, yeah, Robert Bathin. He, he plays a dad on Downton Abbey. Um, and listening to him is just so much fun. Um, even when it was, there's a previous narrator, even listening to him. They bring the writing to life, um, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, the narration is really what's key in a lot of these audiobooks because you can have a phenomenal book with terrible narration and I will not listen more to it than an hour of it. So, um, like I said, Glass Houses by Louise Penny. Okay, number three, we have Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. Um, this was the last book that I 100% finished during the 24 hour readathon. And I really enjoyed this book. Um, I sat down and I started reading it and I barely got up after I started reading, uh, which was kind of the point. But as you saw earlier that day, if you have not watched that video, I highly recommend going and watching it now. Um, earlier that day, I did a lot of errands. I went to the gym and I listened to my audiobook while I did that. Um, but yeah, this one was really good. I was slightly disappointed, but I think what's coming is going to make up for that. Um, and that's why I ranked it a little bit higher because the last like 15, 20 pages of it m kind of made up for the fact that on here it says no God, no creature, no war can become, can come between them. Um, and I thought it was going to be a lot more intense, but it looks like it's going that way. So that's why I kept it at number three. And coming in at number two is Kingdom of the Blind by Louise Penny. Uh, this is probably one of the better Inspector Gamache books that I have listened to recently. Um, before this, I think my favorite was the one where Jean Guy was kind of dealing with his opioid problem and they were in that abbey oh. kind of removed from society. I don't know why. I, I think it was the whole medieval aspect um, that kind of drew me to it, but also I love a seclusion. <laughs> um, but Kingdom of the Blind kind of deals with the fallout of everything that happened in the 
previous book um, while also trying to deal with another mystery. Uh, Amon gets a mysterious letter that draws him to a old house that's on the outskirts um, of Three Pines and he is a liquidator of someone's will. Why? No one knows. Um, so he sets out on this mystery to try to figure that out. So I, I'm liking the later series books a little bit better but also like it's it's a catch-22 it's she's building in the complexity to kind of doing that like series set overarching themes um and then also having individual mysteries in it it's kind of like whenever you watch Criminal Minds or NCIS where there's this big bad that is present throughout the whole season but then each individual episode deals with their own little big bad um so kind of a love hate with that I have very complex feelings but I am keeping that separate from how I like the book <laughs> um yeah so number two was Kingdom of the Blind I actually just finished that yesterday so so coming in last but not least um at number one is A Tempest at Sea by Sherry Thomas. Uh, I absolutely adore um, the Lady Sherlock series. I have listened to it for years, um, so each time one of the books comes out I am one of the people that puts it on hold immediately and then waits like three months. Um, so this book takes Lady Sherlock, uh, which is Charlotte Holmes, and company out to sea. Um, they leave the UK and they start sailing down towards the Iberian Peninsula. And of course, what happens in Lady Sherlock? A murder happens. Um, so the entire series, <laughs> so the entire book is trying to figure out who killed this young man on board um, and everything that comes with it with a few kinks in the wrench because obviously we can't have um, without yeah um, so for this one it's uh, Lady Holmes comes aboard and so does Roger Shrewsbury if you've read the first one you'll know who both of these characters are um, if you haven't yet you need to go read them now um, these are fantastic books. This is the seventh book in the series and I am excited because I think there's going to be number eight and it definitely has that kind of slow burn romance type of thing going on uh, as one of the subplots. So it is fantastic. Um, my personal reading taste is unless I'm looking specifically for a romance book, I don't like romance being the main plot. Um, like I said, this will, this, this, does change because I love Sarah J Maas um but I read her because I want to read a romance I don't read her because I want to read a fantasy <laughs> uh I read her because she's romance and then also has fantasy so um yeah like I said number one A Tempest at Sea by Sherry Thomas uh and if you haven't read them go read them now um and I will be right back at you guys with my September TBR so now we're moving on to my September TBR. Um, I'm keeping it short and sweet uh, just because I am not sure how this month is going to go with the things I want to do. I'm going to try to kind of keep the pace I've been at so that, that way once classes start at the end of this month, um, I don't have to feel super stressed about trying to make sure I am keeping up with my reading. I have four books that I want to read this month and I'm just going to go over them very briefly um, and I'll read the back cover or part of the cover whatever it is that I have if I don't know what it's about. So the first one is This Poison Heart. This one was a gift um, I think last year. I am very behind on my physical TBR so I am picking this one up um, and this is uh, Brisis has a gift. A single touch, she can grow plants from tiny seeds to rich blooms. When her aunt dies and leaves her a dilapidated estate in rural New York, Brie and her parents hope that maybe, surrounded by plants and flowers, Brie will finally be able to learn to control her gift. But their new home is sinister in ways they never expected. It comes with a mysterious set of instructions and a wall garden filled with the world's most, le most lethal botanicals. There is more to Bree's sudden inheritance she, than she could ever imagine, and she's determined to uncover it. 
So this is by the same person who wrote um, Cinderella's Dead. Uh, so I am very excited. Um, there is a sequel and I do have that one as well. So I may read that after I read this depending on how I'm feeling and when I finish it in the month. Um, next, next is The Mystery of Three Quarters. Um, by Sophie Hanna. This is the part of the new Hercule Poirot um, series that is based off of Agatha Christie's novels. So I'm excited to read this. Um, I'm not entirely sure what it's about, but it's a mystery and it's a classic. So, um, well, the physical book isn't a classic, but the character is. The third book I want to read this month is The Bone Season by Shan Samantha Shannon. Um, this is her book that I th she wrote before The Priory of the Orange Tree, obviously because that one is still a new book. Um, and so she had this series come out. So this one is a fantasy slash sci-fi book. Um, so the year is 2059. Paige Mahoney is working in the criminal underworld of Sky in London. Her job is to scout information by breaking into people's minds. For Paige is a dreamwalker, a rare kind of clairvoyant. And underneath Sky and Law, she commits treason by simply breathing. Um, oh. I picked this up and I didn't even realize that this was the same author as The Priory of Orange Tree, which I do currently also have checked out from the library. Um, I'm filming this on like the 29th, so it's going to be 50-50 on whether or not I can finish it before the end of the month. Uh, I don't think I will, so that one will probably be in September's reading wrap-up as well. Um, so I'm excited. This one sounded really good and really interesting, so I picked it up. Um, and I do have to finish these prior to September 3rd, so we're going to try our best. So the last one is The London Seance Society by Sarah Penner. Um, I read her first book, which is right here, The Lost um, Apothecary, when it was in my book of the month, and this is her second book. Um, and so it's amid the shrouded parlors of Victorian London, two daring women hunt for truth and justice and perilous art of conjuring the dead. Um, so it sounds interesting, sounds fun. I know people that have read this and really enjoyed it, so um, I'm going to read it. And I just saw it whenever I was at the library, and I was like, yes, please. Um, so this will definitely, I'm going to try to finish this. Like I said, both of these are due on the third, so we're going to try our best. So that's it for me today. Uh, if you like what you see, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button just down below. And follow me on Instagram to get lots of pictures of my adorable dog, uh, who is sometimes very annoying, but I love her anyways. And um, I post reading, writing, and travel content. I will hopefully be having a travel vlog coming to you guys very shortly. Um, I haven't posted one yet because I have been very busy this summer with stuff at home. Um, but otherwise, thank you guys, and I'll see you very soon with a new video.